A lot of pharmacies working in the area. So we got together, we created the Ethiopian Pharmacist Association. And, uh, we've been active for about four years. And our major mission was to connect with uh, practicing pharmacists in Ethiopia, try to help them in any way possible, professionally, probably financially, uh, consultation, wisdom, whatever possible resources. And um, it, it's been, you know, we, we were very successful for about four years or so. We had wonderful meetings. We also had mission to help when people come to the United States to, to guide them through the process of, to become licensed in this country. And we've helped so many in the process. Another mission was to help those who want to join pharmacy school, how they can join pharmacy school, what kind of information they need. Um, after about four years or so, we joined in, uh, the other association I'll show you in APA. And pretty much at that point, the European Pharmacy Association did go. This is in APA, uh, this is the European Knowledge Association, um, uh, Professional Association. Lots of people, the lots of physicians, nurses, pharmacists. It was very comprehensive, I was very active, I became a secretary, executive board member, and all that stuff. And our mission was to, to the founder, Dr. Vidal Kaushu, who was about in our lives, we publicized very, very well. The mission was uh, to go into Ethiopia and do you know, all kinds of surgeries. As a pharmacist, my mission was to ask, contact all the pharmaceutical companies to donate, you know, uh, medications that help the surgery, during the surgery, pain medicine, antibiotics, and stuff like that. Um, this is one of the pictures, as you see here, almost 90% of the, the members are not Ethiopians, but um, a lot of Americans are excited. In fact, more Americans involved than Ethiopians, even though the original board of the association is involved the diaspora in helping with Ethiopia. Uh, these are the medication. I just took a picture of one year for 100,000 of medications to be ready for the, the surgery. Um, and then, because I teach here, I got involved in teaching. Um, in uh, other, other medical school in the Robertson Hospital, they, they had a master's program in pharmacology. They had several courses that they didn't have anyone to teach. So I, I bought a thing and then I started teaching and they put me in a, in a two-week block time. So students have, they don't take anything else, just my course. So they're with me pretty much every day, five days or two, two weeks. And we did try to go through the course. And, uh, and this is a, a class of, oh, to the next slide. This is a, I think this is their, I don't know if this is their best class, but this is the class in the world of teaching. I tried to take as many books and resources that I can use for students to take. But one thing I tell you is that the first day I walk in to teach, I took my notes that I used to teach at Howard University. And the first 15 minutes, I started giving them introduction about it with the advanced career of oncology. I started giving them introduction and I saw the whole class. And nobody was taking any notes. And, I mean, they're just looking at me. And I, 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 knew, I knew I wasn't in the right place. <laughs> and then I stopped and I asked them questions. And believe me, well, they speak to the people that you see. They told six, five years, four the, 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 the youngest one already been teaching for four years. The, the undergraduate part of the same program. So I knew. All the material that I took doesn't belong there. So I said, okay, you know what? Let's cancel the class today. It's our first day. We're going to go home, get out of the room, go read. And then, literally, I went to the good thing was the half of the hotel that I was staying had high speed connection. I started my entire lecture series from zero. Talking to some people here, when they think of going to Ethiopia to help, they really undermine the knowledge of the people who practice it. Uh, that's one thing I, I learned. We can't. They, 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 may, they may not have the practical experience, but whatever book you have, they smart. They, they, they really look smart. And the people
if I can teach if there is a university city, um, then the best, the best of what, 80 million people. So um, I, I changed from that point on, all my lectures are completely different because I have to match with what they need. What they, they this is class of 2004. Um, Professor Yasmin is the head of the Department of Pharmacology at the Black Line Health Care in this um, class of 2005, all these people you see, all of them are now really big bosses. The guy who's on the way at the gate, he's the head of uh, the College of Pharmacy at Jima University. The next person on the way at the back, he's actually the second person running the FDA equivalent in Ethiopia, they call it DACA. Um, all of them are really in high position. These are the people now I want to see, really, if I want to see some of the people, I have to get an appointment from the secretaries just to, to say hi. <laughs> um, you can also involve the, we have a very strong pharmacy association in Ethiopia. I got involved in giving lectures to the pharmacist association. They're very responsive. You know, they, they really want to hear what, what you really think of. In four, four or five days announcement, Look how many people showed up. I know now it's a, uh, how many times we call it again, it's really, but it was a three or four day announcement. Uh, uh, this is a picture taken right after the, uh, the workshop. When you look at some of the people already left, several people showed up. And most of these people uh, own their own pharmacy, their own businesses. The guy next to me, he's the vice president of our South University right now. Um, so these are not just people who just, you know, you get them from the street. Um, that's how you they value your, your, your part, part, partnership. This is another one uh, that I think is 2003. Um, another way I was able to participate when I, I think it started 2005 or so, was to serve on the external examiner. We have a lot of our you know, master's program, graduate study program, but they don't have expertise from other countries to come to listen to those research results during their thesis dissertation, give a feedback from a different view, from a different opinion. And most of the, of course, I was involved in the pharmacology department, most of the research was on herbals and herbal products. Um, three years ago, that teaching that I started with the black man after that in class, it got bigger and bigger. They used to have only one pharmacy school at South University. Now, every year they keep adding, now they have the, just the government one. There are about seven pharmacy schools, and there are four private schools. We took you out just pharmacy schools. There are about 11 pharmacy schools. So, the things become bigger than just you know one person. And you know when I started, I started with my own fund and I paid my jobs and stuff like that. But it got, it got bigger, so we, we know we needed some support, some financial support, really to make it successful. And we were lucky the training centers through CDC um, three years ago. They saw our what we do through the pay fund. They fund us. $100,000 a day, we, we start to, to become a big game. Officially, instead of we individually, because individual works at one point, it will end. When you start, when you get tired, things will back down. But if you make it institutionalized, whether you're there or not, somebody will figure it out. So we institutionalized it into a Disabha University and Howard University, and we, we formed a partnership, training partnership. Paperwork signed by higher officials from our side and taking side. And then from that point on, people are traveling with me. A lot of people travel there, especially in the area, traveling with me. Okay, a um, couple of things before, uh, before I, I do that. Um, and, then, and then here at Howard itself, this is all we, we've done in Ethiopia, but also here at Howard. At our school of pharmacy, I think there are lots of schools, uh, colleges, universities in Washington, D.C., uh, George Washington University, American, only the 
the best universities are here, but Howard is the only one that has pharmacy school. And the next pharmacy school that told us is uh, for the entire state University of Maryland in the United States. Most states have one or two pharmacy schools. And uh, I can tell you from Howard University, we graduate 